I've got 10 beginner video shooting tips for the Canon R8. These are gonna work with most cameras. My name is Jared Hill. I am a photographer and videographer with almost 20 years of experience shooting everything from weddings to NASCAR. And I have with me the Canon R8, fantastic little camera that shoots great photos and video. So we're gonna jump into 10 video shooting tips that are gonna help you get the most out of your Canon R8 in regards to video. Make sure to check out some of my other videos on the Canon R8, such as beginner tips for photographers as well. And I have some courses that are fantastic for taking the next step in your photography and videography. Let's jump into it. The first tip is to understand camera settings. We're going to go ahead and turn on the camera. I'll extend the lens. We have the kit lens here on the camera and we're going to go into the menu. Now we need to make sure that we're on the video mode. So we'll switch over to the video mode and go into our menu, toggle all the way over to the left hand side. We're going to start with choosing a proper resolution. So the movie record size is your video resolution and you have some options here for size and quality. You have 4K and HD quality as far as your options are available. And I typically always shoot in 4K, but it is a larger file size, which means it's gonna take up more memory on your SD card. There are also some different quality levels here as well. Even though most of us have 4K televisions, we have handheld devices that will play something larger than an HD video, it's not always necessary to shoot something 4K. 1080 is definitely very usable and a perfect size for video, especially if you're getting started. So don't feel like you need to shoot everything in 4K because that's gonna take a lot more storage space on your computer, external hard drives, and all of that stuff. So I typically choose the 4K 29.97, which is pretty close to 30p, and that's gonna give me an hour, just over an hour of record time with the SD card that I have in this camera. Now, there are other options. You can see as I go up to 60 frames per second, which I would wanna use if I was gonna be shooting action or something that I wanted to slow down in video editing. But you can see that basically cuts the record time in half. That's because it's capturing twice the amount of information for every second recorded. And so I typically don't shoot in 60p or 59.94 unless I have have a specific reason, but we can go even lower. You could see there's a 4K version here that is lower resolution and we get over two hours of record time. And then if we drop down into HD, you can see we get four hours and as much as almost 11 hours of record time here. If you're just out shooting for fun, kind of practicing, you don't necessarily need to be shooting in a high resolution option, which is gonna eat up a lot of memory. Definitely choose a recording level that is going to get you a lot of record time and that you know is not going to clog up your hard drive to where you're gonna to have to be deleting files or figuring out another way to store files. Another setting I often change is the sound recording from auto to manual. The problem with auto is that automatic mode will adjust the floor of your sound level based on the ambient sound that's going on around you. So if there's no sound going on around you, the camera is gonna boost its recording level in an attempt to hear things. And that's gonna increase the ambient background sound it's just not going to be pleasant in the video. So I highly recommend shooting with a manual recording level. And when you shoot with a manual recording level, you can then adjust the recording level. And so you can see it was kind of peaking. It was hitting the red, hitting zero and, and going red. We don't want that. We want the loudest audio that we're going to have to probably be somewhere between the 12 and the 6. And so somewhere in there is a good sweet spot. You can, of course, increase the audio levels a little bit in post-production when you're doing your editing, but you definitely don't want it clipping. So you want to test just to make sure that whatever the loudest sounds are that you're going to be capturing, whether it's audible voice, and especially if it's audible voice, because we want the voice to come through clear, that it's not going to be clipping. So I always shoot in manual audio levels, which definitely means I'm going to have to come in and make adjustments pretty often, but I would rather make adjustments than have some crazy loud base level ambient sounds in the background that are going to be really hard to get rid of or having my audio peak on me. Now, depending on what camera mode you're gonna be shooting in, and by camera mode, I mean whether you're gonna be shooting in manual mode, aperture priority, shutter priority, or automatic, you will definitely wanna set your maximum ISO range, especially if you're gonna be shooting in one of the automatic 
modes that will adjust the ISO automatically. Now, the reason you want to set this is because if you go into lower light situations, the camera is going to attempt to boost the ISO. And when it boosts the ISO, it could introduce noise and grain into your image. We're going to talk about ISO a little bit more as we get into this video, but I definitely set a maximum for that just so that your camera doesn't accidentally go above that. Typically for video, you would probably want to set the max on this camera to 12,800 so the camera doesn't try to push it so far that you get bad looking video. You can definitely compensate for low exposure with some of the other camera settings, which we'll talk about here in a few moments. So the next tip is mastering focus on your camera. Focus is super important. And a lot of people, when they shoot video, think they need to shoot manual focus, which means manually adjusting the focus on your camera. Now, depending on what you're gonna be shooting, this could be definitely challenging, especially if you are new to shooting video. So I recommend mastering the autofocus functions of your camera before you start looking into manual focus. I typically only shoot manual focus when my camera is locked down on a tripod and my subject is not going to be moving and I don't want the camera to accidentally search for something else that's going on. I will manually focus on my subject and then the camera is not going to do any sort of focusing because I know that the subject isn't going to be moving either. But in most cases, I'm moving around, so is the camera, and I definitely want autofocus to be capturing nice and sharp images as I am shooting video. So there's a couple of different things that you can do with this camera when you are shooting. Primarily what you're going to want to do to focus is have a subject that you're going to focus on. So we'll just choose this lens cap as our focus point. You can tap on the subject very easily and you can see that as I move the camera around, the camera does its best to try and follow and it looks like it lost the focus. It is a little dark right here. So it's challenging for it to keep focus on the lens cap, but this works really well, especially for people. So if you tap this right on the eye of the person, then it's going to do its best to maintain focus on that person and not lose focus. Even if you're moving around a little bit with the camera, the camera's gonna do its best to maintain focus on that subject. And so that's a great way to maintain focus. There there are also other focus settings. And so if I press the quick set button on the camera here, you can see I have the AF area illuminated. That's the first option in the top left. And so I have all of these different focus options down here below. And so if the AF, which the whole area AF option, which what that means is it's using the entire visible area that the camera has to try and find things that it should autofocus on, that's uh, the option that's chosen by default. But sometimes that doesn't work out too well and I need to go into a spot AF or a one point AF. And so often I will choose spot AF. You can see here it's added this little spot into the middle of the screen and I will tap on the screen where I want the focus to be. And so as the camera focuses, you can see here it's focused on the lens cap because that's where the focus area is. And if I put my finger here into the middle of the screen, it is not being distracted by my finger that is in the middle of the screen or something else that is moving around in the screen because we're telling the camera only focus on that spot, on that point that we have chosen. And so there are certain circumstances where the intelligent autofocus features of the camera are giving you problems. It's not staying locked on. It gets distracted with maybe something else in the background. So using area AF, which is this option right here, is definitely a great option because it forces the camera only to focus where you tell it to focus. Now, the third tip is to understand basic composition. Composition is the positioning of your subject in relation to where they're gonna show up on your scene. And so when you look at the back of your camera, you can see we've got a landscape orientation here. It is wider than it is tall. And if we're shooting something for social media, perhaps we're shooting in this orientation, where it is taller than it is wide. And so the positioning of your subject, whatever that's gonna be, whether it's gonna be a person or an animal or an object, whatever it's gonna be, is pretty important, especially with people as we wanna draw the eye to the person. And so there are tools such as the rule of thirds that divide the screen up into quadrants and make it very easy for you to determine where you're gonna position somebody. And composition can really affect the vibe that your video is going to give. So for example, in what you're watching with me, I am front and center 
I'm in the middle of the screen. I'm looking straight at you. And this is more of an authoritative position and stance. I am educating you. I'm teaching you something. And so I position myself right in the middle. However, if I wanted to position myself for an interview as if I was being interviewed, I might move myself off to the side a little bit and position myself looking across the screen as if I'm looking at somebody. And so I'd be looking off camera. So instead of looking directly at the camera, I might be looking off to the side of the camera as if I was being interviewed or talking to somebody and having a conversation. You can tell it definitely gives a different vibe when I'm talking to somebody off camera instead of talking directly to the camera. And so composition and positioning of your subject in your scene is going to matter because if I'm talking to somebody off camera, it's kind of weird that I'm in the middle of the screen. And it would be even more weird if I was over on this side of the screen because I'd be on the edge, like as if I'm talking to somebody and whispering to somebody off to the side, whereas I would want to be more positioned and off on this side of the screen, looking off camera and talking to the person. And so composition is really important, especially even composition with what's going on in the background. The background can be very distracting. I've got a course on my website that teaches a lot about composition, both with photography and video. So if that's something that's interesting to you, definitely check out the link in the description below. The fourth tip is understanding exposure and the basics of exposure, such as the exposure triangle. Now there's definitely Definitely different rules for shooting video when you get to the higher end, but when we're shooting with cameras like this, we're basically using the same fundamentals as photography. But there are a few things to keep in mind. First of all, if we are shooting at a 29.97 or 30p frame rate, we want to have double the frame rate as our shutter speed. And so you can see here my shutter speed is 1 30th. That's definitely not high enough, so I need to make a change to my shutter speed. But I am in a camera mode called Aperture Priority, which means the shutter speed is going to adjust automatically to get me the proper exposure. Aperture priority is not the best option to use when shooting video. I would either use manual mode or I would use shutter priority. And if you're really, really new and you don't wanna mess around with camera settings, of course you can go into the automatic mode. But with shutter priority, I'm allowed to set the shutter speed and adjust the shutter speed to what I want. And so 1 60th of a second would be as slow of a shutter speed as you would want to go when you're shooting 30 frames per second. Now, if you're shooting 60 frames per second, you would want to increase that shutter speed up to 120 or at least 125. You want to be a little bit above it if there's not an exact multiplier there. And so you want to start there with that. And then the exposure triangle basically means that there needs to be a balance between your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO. Your shutter speed we just set. And the exposure triangle is being left up to the camera when we are in one of these automatic assist modes like shutter priority. We're telling the camera we want the shutter speed to be this, but we're allowing the camera to decide what the aperture and the ISO is going to be. If you don't understand shutter speed, aperture and ISO. I have a free course called Ditch Auto, which is a photography course, but it teaches the fundamentals of photography in regards to camera settings. And so I definitely recommend you check that out. The link's down in the description. So the exposure triangle basically means that there's a balance that you need to have between those three different settings. And if one of those settings is off, chances are your exposure is going to be off or something in regards to your image is going to be off. And there's no triangle that you can look at on the back of the camera. So it can be kind of confusing. But understanding how the shutter speed can affect the aperture and how the aperture can affect the shutter speed and then how you can use the ISO to balance those out is pretty important. For example, if we slow down the shutter speed, which means a, a smaller number, 1 30th rather than 1 60th, we are letting more light into our camera. If we speed up the shutter speed, perhaps going up to 1 20th of a second, we're letting less light in to the sensor. And so that's going to throw off our triangle a little bit if we make that adjustment. And we can compensate by adjusting our aperture. Our aperture is a feature of the lens, the lens iris that opens and closes. And as we open up that iris with a lower f stop number, perhaps an f2.8, that is going to let in more light. But as we bring that down and make that aperture smaller, for example, like an f10 or f12, 
we're letting in more light and that's going to throw off the balance of the exposure triangle as well. This is just a really kind of crash course on this topic. If you don't understand these things, definitely dive into them more. They're pretty easy to understand once they've been explained for more than just a couple of minutes. But understanding these settings are going to help you get a good exposure on your image where it's not too bright, not too dark, and it's just perfect. A tool that you can use when you're shooting in manual mode is your camera's meter. You can see here that as I put the camera down on the table, the little arrow off to the left hand side shows me that the exposure is way too dark and of course we can tell that. As I bring this up a little bit you can see the meter is coming up and it is showing us that things are quite a bit overexposed in this shot because it is over the center line and we want to keep it pretty close to the center line and so we can do that by adjusting our camera settings and making changes to our camera settings until we get close to that center and so as we re-meter, you can see we're pretty well centered now, and that gives us an indication that our image is gonna be pretty much properly exposed. It's not perfect, but it definitely helps get you there. Number five is stabilizing your shots. When you're watching video, there's nothing worse than shaky video, and cameras like these do a pretty good job of applying some stabilization, but they're not perfect. When you're running and gunning or handheld shooting, there's gonna be naturally a little bit of shake involved. And so I always kind of lock my arms in and shoot like this so that I have as much stabilization control and my arms aren't shaking and flapping around when I'm shooting video. When I'm shooting handheld, I'm definitely trying my best to keep my body as still as possible as I'm moving so that I don't introduce a bunch of shake making my subject fall out of frame or something like that that's going to be distracting to the viewer watching the video. A lot of times I end up shooting with a tripod. This is a tripod that I've been shooting with a lot lately. It's from Komen, I think. It's the Light H carbon fiber tripod, and it's great for travel. It's very compact, very easy to carry around with you. It's lightweight because it's carbon fiber. The camera just snaps right in like so, right into this, and it is snapped in, yes. And it's very secure, so I don't have to worry about it. It also has a video head, kind of a basic video head on it, so I can make movements here. I can realign everything and balance this very easily. Sorry, it's a little bit out of frame. What I love about this is just how fluid the movements are on this. So as I'm getting some cool shots, just maybe it's a product shot or a detail shot, I'm able to just really move this tripod head around and get nice stable shots very easily. And then your camera just pops right off with the push of a button. There's a button right on the back of the tripod. You just simply push it and the camera pops off. So what's great about this is that the legs extend extremely long. I mean, really long. And so this uh, tripod, even though it, it can be a little bit shaky, I mean, as you tighten these up, things get pretty sturdy. As you go full length on the height, you'll introduce maybe a little bit of shake into this. But for the size of the tripod, you really can't get much better than this. This tripod is absolutely fantastic. It has a lot of features and it's definitely a great way to keep your image stable. Especially if you're shooting a subject that is still, that's not moving, you definitely don't want the camera to be introducing a bunch of shake as well. So having a good tripod that is mobile, that you can take with you, that's really easy to use, such as this one, I'll link to it down in the description below, is a must have. There are also other tools that you can get for your camera, such as gimbal stabilizers, which are a little tricky, definitely need some practice to learn how to use them and understand how to control them and get great shots. That's definitely a topic for a more advanced video, but camera gimbals are a very popular way to keep your camera stable as well. Number six is utilizing natural light. Natural light is a great way to light your scene. And especially if you're shooting a subject, you want to have good natural light on that person. Now in a scene like this, I'm in a studio. None of the light in here is natural. It's all by lights that I have around the room. But the best light that is just more flattering and beautiful is natural light because that's what we're used to seeing with our eyes. And so if you could position your subject near a nice large window where the light is coming through, not harshly and really, you know, kind of side lighting your subject and it doesn't look good because it's just way too bright, you might move your subject away from that lighting source or that window so the light softens a bit. Look at your subject and see where the shadows are falling on that person. 
or if it's you know something else that you're shooting, see where the shadows are. And are the shadows going to look flat through your camera? Or are the shadows gonna make the shape of the person's face look a little off and not flattering? If you are shooting a subject, you definitely wanna put them in the best light possible. And that might mean moving them around a little bit. And it also might mean moving you and your camera around a little bit. Using natural light is great because it's a free option, but it also could be changing as the sun moves throughout the day, as clouds move, it changes the color temperature of the light. And definitely there could be a lot of factors there. So if you are gonna shoot in natural light, think about those factors, things that might change, like the sun moving and changing the angle of the light and clouds coming in and changing the color temperature or even the brightness of the ambient light that's coming through your room. So those are things to consider for longer shoots. Otherwise, if you're just shooting for a minute or two, it's not gonna be a problem, but it's something to think about. Audio is extremely important when it comes to video. We talked a little bit about setting manual audio settings earlier, but the Canon R8 only captures okay audio using its internal microphone. Sometimes we need to help it out a little bit. Now, depending on what you're shooting, you may want to add an external microphone. I often use this Rode video mic here. This is the video mic go to, and it slides right into your hot shoe and then plugs in right over on the mic port on your camera. And what's great about a microphone like this is that it cancels out a lot of noise that's taking place behind the camera. A shotgun microphone is designed to capture audio from something in front of the microphone and cancel out audio that is behind. And so it does help isolate a voice or isolate sounds and things that are happening in the background. It's a great option and a must have for your camera bag if you're shooting video. When you're plugged in like this, you definitely wanna make sure that your camera is on manual audio recording settings. So if we go into this setting now, you can see we're capturing audio. And if I go and adjust and just make some adjustments, I might bring that down a little bit because chances are the microphone that you're using is gonna capture differently than the internal microphone. So you can't just plug in a microphone and go. You definitely need to make sure that you're paying attention to the audio levels that are on the back of your camera and that you're not capturing something too loud and end up peaking that audio. Another option is using a wireless lapel system like this setup from Godox. This setup from Godox is awesome because these microphones you can put on a person and then you can also attach to your camera. So for example, we'll just pop one of these out and I'll power them on really quick. Now you can see these are the A and B microphones and these microphones are made to just easily clip on a person like that. And I'm sure you've seen things like this in all sorts of different videos. Now we're gonna power on the receiver and the receiver just easily slides right into your hot shoe. So you can see we just slide it in right here. So this goes to the camera and then there's also a headphone jack here for monitoring as well. So we plug a cord in here and then plug it into the microphone and then we're able to record audio from two different people. So if you have two different people in your shot, you can mic up each one of them. You don't have to mic up each one, you can just choose one microphone only. But what I love about these Godox mics is the fact that they also record internally. They have mute buttons on the side of them. So when you're not capturing, or maybe say your, your subject or whatever needs to go use the bathroom, you can just mute it for them. It also has a jack so that you can run a lapel mic, a wired one. So if you don't want this big brick on their jacket or whatever, you can just run a little mic and clip this to their pocket. And they also charge really easily using USB-C. And then of course they come with this charging case as well, where you just drop it in the case and it starts charging. I'd say for me though, one of the killer features of this Godox system is the fact that it has audio output. And of course my camera has that as well, but not all cameras have audio output for headphones. And so being able to monitor that here is definitely great. Uh, typically though, I would monitor out of the camera because I wanna hear what the camera hears and I wanna make sure there are no issues there, but I can definitely also do that on this camera. And then using the settings on the side here, I can increase and decrease the audio levels. And so if my camera settings are a little bit off for audio and it's maybe moved all the way to one side or the other, I can easily make adjustments to my audio levels here on the Godox device itself. So definitely a cool feature and a setup like this is great, something to have in your bag. Sometimes it's a better option than a shotgun microphone because a shotgun microphone at times can capture too much that's going on and not isolate enough of the subject that's talking where you might need something like this. I'll link to this down in the description below. Now, 
Now, number eight is understanding some different video shooting techniques. Now, depending on what you're shooting is gonna determine what kind of shots you need. If you're shooting vlogs or if you're shooting interviews or really pretty much anything, there are some different shots that you should try and get to make your video the most interesting. You first of all want to capture some establishing shots. These are shots that are going to establish the environment that your subject is in. That might mean getting shots of the building or getting shots of the interior, getting shots of your subject walking over to the seat that they're going to be sitting in or whatever it is. Or maybe it's even just a preparation shot like uh, making coffee or something like that. We've seen a lot of different types of establishing shots at the beginning of videos, especially on YouTube. There are then two other types of shots that you want to get, a medium shot and a close up. And if you're shooting an interview, you can have multiple cameras doing all of this at the same time. You can have a medium shot and then you can also have a close up shot where things get a lot closer. Of course, in my video editing, I tend to do my close up by just punching in in post production. So I'm just utilizing one camera here. And if you only have one camera, it might be hard to figure out which one you should focus on most. I would say if you only have one camera, you want to focus on the most interesting shot that you can capture of whatever is going on and then shoot B-roll or extra shots that you can edit in later on. So when shooting video, the more that you can capture and bring into your video edit to keep people's attention and keep things interesting, the better. Now let's talk briefly about battery management. When you're shooting video, it's going to drain your battery a lot faster than if you were shooting anything else. And so if you go into the settings and go under power savings, I think it's going to be important to make sure that these are set up properly so that your camera isn't just sitting there and running for a long time. Screen dimmer at 20 seconds means that the screen on the back of your camera is going to dim after 20 seconds when it's not doing anything. There's also screen off and I can set screen off to three minutes. That means that after three minutes, if my camera is just recording or doing whatever it's doing and I haven't touched the camera, the screen is going to turn off, which is going to save battery. I can then just gently tap on the back of the screen to get the screen to come back on. Of course, there are tallies on the front of the camera so that you know that you're recording, so you don't have to worry about that. But auto power off is another good one because if we set our camera down and we forget to turn it off, auto power off is going to help us. And then viewfinder off after one minute. I just left that set to default. So with those settings set that way, we're going to make sure that our camera isn't using a bunch of battery unnecessarily. I definitely recommend just turning your camera off after a while. If you're not using it, turn it off. Don't even rely on those extra settings because if you know you're not going to be using your camera for about 10 minutes or something like that, why let the camera sit there and eat up a minute or three minutes or whatever of battery life while uh, you wait for it to go into one of those modes? I just simply turn it off set the camera down because you never know how long it's going to take before you come back to it. If the camera gets bumped, if somebody touches the camera, if you accidentally touch the camera, it's going to wake back up. It's going to start to eat more battery. Now, another thing that you can do is plug in USB into the side of the camera when you're filming. And that's typically what I do. I will plug in a USB into the side of the camera so that the camera is charging the battery while it's using the battery. And that will give me a much longer runtime. I also always have some sort of a power bank with me. So when I know that I'm not using my camera, I just plug it in to top off the battery so that I know that I have a lot more battery for whatever it is I'm going to shoot next. And then it's also important just to have maybe an extra battery or two. Don't rely on just one battery because if something happened to this battery or if it went all the way dead, chances are you're gonna have to wait a little while while the battery charges up enough so that you can keep ahead of how fast the battery's draining with charging it. So get a couple of extra batteries. I've got those linked in the description below. I also recommend going with a fast enough SD card. If you're gonna be shooting video, especially if you're gonna be shooting 4K video, especially if you're gonna be shooting 60P video, at least go with a card that has 280 megabytes per second write and read. This is an SDXC2 card. A lot of the cards these days are V30, V60, V90. This card's a little bit older and you can find these a little bit cheaper, but you at least want to have a V30 card in your camera. If you're going to be shooting 4K, especially 4K60, I would go with a V60 rated card. I've got those linked in the description below so you can check them out. Now, the last step is going to be practicing with simple projects. The more you get out with your camera and shoot, the faster you're going to improve and get better at capturing and getting the kind of footage that you want. The most frustrating 
interesting thing is going out with our camera and shooting and then not capturing what it was that we saw in our mind's eye. Practicing helps us get closer, understanding our camera settings, understanding compositional tools and techniques like we talked about earlier, and all of those things in one to get good video out of your camera. It takes practice. It's not something you're going to be able to master overnight. So find opportunities to go out and shoot, whether it's with friends or family or shooting something for a friend's project or business just for practice and letting them know that you're learning and you don't know what you're gonna get out of this, but you'll make sure to give them something. It's practice makes perfect with shooting video. The more you get out there, the more you get comfortable with your camera, and the environments that you're shooting in, the better video footage you're going to create. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for sticking with me. If you found this useful, give me a subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and share a thought down in the comment section below. Check out my courses linked in the description, and I hope to see you back in another video soon. Take care.